this one over there? Yeah. One and then two. Okay. Um, more of a comment to the, uh, the panel. Um, my name is Mary Johnson. I'm from the Department of Immigration and Citizenship in Canberra. Um, and my comment is more um, around the relative role of organisations and in government. My comment comes from the perspective of not only having worked in government, but having worked in high tech, I worked with Microsoft in Seattle, so I uh, worked on both sides. And um, obviously nothing is black and white. But I think what I would say is this, that um, there have been some of the major, if you like, innovations um, uh, in history um, that have been driven together uh, by government and organisations. And I think the Moon Program, the Lunar Program, uh, was one of those. Um, um, highly innovative, where the technology didn't even exist um, to uh, lead to that great achievement, and the technology that then was subsequently invented had wide application in, in our society and economy. Also to balance off the question then around um, whether or not government is effective and functional, and of course, uh, you know, uh, I think every organisation has its, uh, you know, uh, scorecard if you like. Um, but um, the recent global financial crisis um, was not, uh, you know, driven by the government. And in fact, in Australia, the government uh, did a lot to balance that off. So um, I guess what I was sensing was a little bit of, um, you know, uh, democracy is broken and the government is part of the problem. Um, and I certainly um, can see that um, government um, is not perfect. Um, um, organisations equally are not perfect and having worked in not only Microsoft but others, um, I, I know that. Um, but um, I think there's something that should be said though for a grand strategic vision um, which compels um, an economy and economies um, uh, together um, around, around a certain, a certain you know, sort of goal and vision. And maybe climate change is, is, is one of those um, for this, um, this era in which we live. Climate change has barely got mentioned during your election. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Question over here. where they think and how they think and whether they think we should change where the dialogue is about science. Um, one of the things that I've noticed, I've come very late into sort of academia and, um, and I'm kind of a pracademic, I still have a foot in both camps. And what I notice now is that there's this sudden huge amount of, of wonderful information that I, I can get now that I didn't get before. But the discussions and the debates are still not in the mainstream. And you get, so we get the, the mindless swivel, and then the answers are tucked away in, in you know, sort of annual, um, the obscure kind of uh, things. And while I listen every week to the science show and all in the mind and all those, sorts, I think that they're wonderful. I, where, where should we be? speaking to people in general who only get the dribble. How can we actually get into their space? Because they're not going to get into ours. How do you get a bigger conversation about science, Susan? Well, of course, you're the person that should be answering mm -hmm. that. Um, I think this raises a very interesting issue among the scientific community because there's still a lot of sales resistance um, about talking to the media. Um, one gets sniffily called, um, you know, a dumbing down or media don and these kinds of uh, these kinds of names, and the perception is that if you, as a scientist, are talking to the media, then um, you're slightly suspect in some way, you're not really concentrating completely on your science, um, and I think there's a resentment partly because if you do talk to the general public, inevitably you separate the signal from the noise, you do um, just streamline on the salient point. May I ask and a can, I, can, I, can I just finish? I'm mid-flow. I'm mid-flow. Flow uh, I'm flowing. I'm Flow flowing. I'm flowing. Um, and if you do that, then inevitably if you're discussing someone else's work, they're going to be upset because you haven't put in all the bells and whistles that they would put in. And so, you know, it's their life's work and they hear someone else dismissing it in one or two sound bites. Of course, they're going to feel resentful. And my own view is that until science communication and the dissemination of science to more general non-scientific sectors, until that is rewarded 
with grant or the tick on the grant applications or until um, that is some way acknowledged within the scientific community as something useful and good to do, we're going to have the problem that the lady pinpointed. But when the scientists do engage, as with the Science Media Centre, both in London and Australia and all the way around the world now, then it can be very rewarding because you do have authoritative views. They are um, packaged appropriately for the non-specialists, but they are still good and they're thorough and they're accurate. That's the kind of thing we could do, but we do need the buy-in of not just a handful of scientists, but as part of the science culture. Now you can ask your question. Indeed. Uh, the Science Media Centre, on which I sit on the board, is uh, one of your very great achievements. Mm. Um, and you'll explain what it does later if you don't know. However, in Britain, and to some extent here, you can sometimes get rock stadia filled with people listening to a scientist. For instance, Brian Cox has just been two weeks ago to this country, goes on the road with Simon Singh and dare I say Ben Goldberg and others. You yourself have filled huge halls. There was a, an immense appetite for this sort of thing. Mm. But that in itself bubble. will breed resentment, of course, among other <laughs> scientists. You know, I mean, and, and you can understand, I would, I'd feel like that probably if I saw someone do that. So, that that so, would be resentful. No, 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 that's bad. No, no, you have to question why they're resentful and try and help everyone buy into something. And that's what we need to do. Just because there may be a minority of rock stars, you know, what we need is for the culture to acknowledge that this is a good thing in some way or other. Yeah. Sure. It better work, because if we don't tell the taxpayer what we're doing with their money, we're not going to get much more mm, of it. Absolutely. And, and one of the things that I do is I actually train the people in my lab how to communicate, how, how to pot their, their work in a way that can be understood. Uh, what's very interesting, and just as a little side, um, is that uh, often when I give talks, um, and, I, and I'm trying to give them for a generalist audience rather than for a specialist audience, I get a much more positive feedback, mm. because half the the audience doesn't really know what I'm talking about anyway, even if they are scientists. So you right. have to keep remembering that everybody's a generalist at mm. one level or another. And I think that's where the, the, there's, a, there's a, obviously a very uh, delicate dance to be played with your colleagues and make sure that you don't um, over, overstep the mark. Um, and often the people who do overstep the mark are doing it um, for, for purely you know, self-interested reasons. And so, uh, like everywhere else, there are egomaniacs and you just have to deal with them. But in general, I think we're not spending enough time teaching our scientists, our young scientists, yeah. how, to, how to actually, in a, mm. in a very concise way, think about their work and get out of it the meat of it that someone really can understand. Mm. Because the public doesn't want to just hear about the stuff that's good for granny. They, they want to hear about the exciting stuff that you were talking about. Well, they about want to have their ideas, but they want to stimulate... Yeah, they want to see yeah. what it's like yeah. to be yeah. inside our minds and what, what happens when you actually do come up with a good idea, be it on a piece of paper or in yeah. the shower where my tendency They should be the stimulators as you do when you've been to a good play or a good film. Exactly. And we want, you want discussion, you want, dis you want disagreement, because that's what a healthy society is. Mm -hmm.